Ladies and gentlemen, let's read gaming tech.com video. Let us discuss the Xbox One's ES RAM yet again. Yes, it was a subject we seem to have gotten away from for a while, but now it's clawed us right back into its loving embrace. As I'm sure many of you are aware, it has been blamed for a lot of the issues with Xbox One's development, and recently there's been an interview with at Rebellion Games, and the senior producer who's working on Sniper Elite 3 has some opinions I've actually linked directly to this uh, interview, so you can check it out. I'm also going to link to my own article concerning ESRAM, because a lot of stuff in terms of some of the mathematics that... Um, we could use to calculate some of the stuff out in there anyway, but I imagine quite a few of you have already seen it. Anywho, so the source of contention, the issues of dismay are pretty simple. It's just not large enough. Yes, that's what she said. Indeed, uh, I'm going to read you. I'm sorry, guys, I'm in a really quippy mood today. It's because it's fairly late when I'm recording. I can only apologize. But anyway, I'm going to read you guys out the exact quote. It means you have to do... Sorry, uh, it was a clearly a bit more complicated to extract the maximum power from the Xbox One when you're trying to do that. I think the SRAM is easy to use, the only problem is, part of the problem is it's just too small to output 1080p within the size. It's such a small size that within there we can't do everything at 1080p with the little buffer and super fast RAM. It means you have to do it in chunks or using tricks, tiling it and so on. It's a bit like the reverse of the PS3. The PS3 was harder to program for than the Xbox 360. Now it seems like everything has reversed, but it doesn't mean it's far less powerful. It's just a pain in the ass to start with. We are on the ground now, but the first few months were hell. They're releasing a new SDK that's much faster and we're more comfortable running at 1080p on the Xbox One. We were worried six months ago, but not anymore. It's getting better and more comparable machines. The Xbox One is a bit more multimedia, a bit hub-centric and a bit more complex. There's stuff you can and can't do just because that's sort of a multimedia hub. PS4 doesn't have that. The PS4 is just a games machine. I mean, that's probably why, at least on paper, it's a bit more powerful, but I think the Xbox One is going to catch up, but definitely there's the ES RAM. The PS4 has 8 gigs, it's almost as fast as ES RAM. They're referring to bandwidth, by the way, but at the same time, you can go a little bit further with it because you don't have the slower memory, and that's why you don't have so many games running at 1080p, because you have to make it smaller so you can fit into the ES RAM of the Xbox One. And that's pretty much all the developers said, so that's the end of quote. Now you may remember I recently reported as well of various industry insiders as well as news concerning not only driver updates for the S uh, Xbox One, but also um, updates for the reduction of the GPU reserve. Just to fill you guys in, although you could search for it on the channel if you so desire, the basic premise is simple. Um, the Xbox One had a rather large reserve of GPU time uh, for OS functionality. And they've since toned the 10% down to 2%. So, yes, there is still a percent reserved, but it's nowhere near as much as it used to be. So, the question, of course, on everyone's mind, you know, how much of a parity really can they have? Well, honestly, right now, I mean, I've gone through the maths with you guys quite a bit, and I don't... I think the I think the ES RAM is going to become less of an issue. I, I think it's going to be a pain, but I think short term, short to medium term, like the next one to two years at most, it's going to be the biggest issue. But I think eventually it's going to uh, peter out. But I just I don't understand how they're going to make the gap up in terms of raw GPU performance because it's just too great of a gap. Um, that's not to say that, you know, you can't get great looking games on the Xbox One. Um, it's just to say, of course, that they're going to have to be a lot smarter in terms of resolution. Having said that, as we've discussed numerous times before, 900p to 1080p and a hell of a lot of GPU uh, difference between the two uh, systems, between the Xbox One and PS4, just goes bye-bye. It's actually a little bit interesting. Um... I've been doing some frame rate tests and a lot of analysis over the last few days on PS4 games. And I'm actually putting together the Tomb Raider uh, frame rate analysis for the PS4. 
And it's kind of interesting because you can see that there are definitely times when the PS4's GPU, particularly when it's rendering a lot of TressFX stuff, although more in that when I've finished my findings and so forth, um, you could definitely tell that the GPU is being heavily worked. Um, I have done a little bit of analysis on this in terms of memory usage as well. And yes, TressFX is definitely gobbling up a lot of memory. And so it's possible that that also somewhat blends in with the ESRAM problems as well. Um, because TressFX obviously has a heavy toll in terms of uh, utilization on the graphics. And I'm sure many of you are aware that the PS4 version of Tomb Raider is considerably faster. So what are my thoughts? Well, does it affect purchase decisions? I mean, that's really... I mean, I love this type of tech news, but here's the thing. Does it really affect you as a gamer? Well, it depends. As I've argued before, the issue is more down to if you can only buy one console and short term, which one do you get? You know, people might be put off with the lower resolution, but long term, or for people planning to buy both systems, or for people who just plain prefer the Xbox One, it doesn't really make much difference. Personally, I own the PlayStation 4, but I am looking into Xbox One deals. Um, now they're actually becoming a bit more freely available in the UK. There is a couple of reasonable looking deals out there, so I'm, I'm kind of edging towards maybe a Titan 4 bundle or something like that when it's actually launched, who the heck knows and figuring out which one to get, because, you know, I do want an Xbox One. Why? Because, well, it just makes sense. I mean, arguably, there's not a great amount of games on either system yet, um, PlayStation 4 or Xbox One, but, you know, it's the first year, basically, of launch, so you can't really expect an abundance of games. It's not like it's going to be a gaming nirvana within a few weeks of uh, post-launch. So my point being, you know, I think developers will learn to get around some of the issues of the Xbox One. However, long term, there's going to be better parity between the systems in terms of maybe you get slightly more stable frame rates and developers are going to find it easier to program. But at the same time, I don't really see, simply because there's that massive gulf. Um, if you want more information, you can just check it out either on our website or the channel. I mean right now on the featured home is like the ps4 gpu versus the xbox one so you could check that out if you want it's literally on the featured playlist so you could check that if you so desire but it's just too much computing power difference it's like 1.32 ter teraflops i'm sorry if i can pronounce the word versus like 1.84 i just don't see how basically 500 g flops roughly rounding it up is going to just disappear along with all the rops and everything else it's it's just too much of a golf but we can only hope for better conversions in the long term and of course enjoy the games while we have them anyway i'll see you soon take care and bye for now